There's an old saying that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And there is some considerable truth to the axiom. In that sense, if you want to defend your freedom of speech, you've got to be perpetually aware to things that might erode it. Second thing that you need to be aware of is asymmetric, asymmetric strategies when individuals have to deal with large corporations, governments, monopolies, this sort of thing. And that can be eloquently summarised as if you don't stand together, you'll get hung separately. In this fashion, I want to bring your attention to some of YouTube's recent actions. A while ago, I um, instigated a protest against YouTube called YouTube versus the Users. There were three parts, part one, part two, part three. All of them had tens of thousands of hits on them. All of them were mirrored a couple of hundred times at least a piece. And if you now type YouTube versus the Users into a search engine, I find nothing on any of the videos at all, despite the tens of thousands of hits, despite the hundreds of mirrors. Right? And I've been in contact with people around the world. Some of them find something, others find nothing. And I find that exceptionally disturbing. Firstly, and it's almost a direct Orwellian rewrite of history. <laughs> That's pretty distasteful stuff. Secondly, it shows an intent on the part of YouTube that they are willing to manipulate the system to their benefit. Um, and many of you will say, well, where's the problem? They're a company, they can do whatever the hell they want. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. No. Um, influence without accountability is the root of corruption. And you don't have to think long or hard to realize that YouTube essentially has a, a monopoly on the viral video market to the point where it would almost be unthinkable that a presidential candidate or a president would start up a video account anywhere else. And let me paint the scenario that uh, whichever presidential candidate uh, says that will give YouTube the most latitude for freedom uh, is the one that YouTube algorithmically promotes or demotes the other guy. You can see that a influence without accountability is the root of corruption and YouTube has demonstrated that it is willing to manipulate the system to its own advantage. So that's I see as a fairly disturbing development. The second is the beta channels. Now if you go to your beta channel you'll probably have got this message saying that uh, YouTube has done this to make it more interesting to watch and fun to customize. And doesn't that sound great? Well, that's obviously bullshit. Um, in that the beta channels have been almost universally unpopular to the point where when YouTube tried to introduce them a few months back, uh, the backlash essentially forced them to delay the introduction of the beta channels by two months, and now they've done it on a rolling schedule to not generate so much of a backlash. But again, the beta channels are still almost universally unpopular. So why would YouTube hoist something like this on their users? And in interpreting YouTube's actions, I make the assumptions that they've got a lot of smart people working for them. And even though they're losing money today, this is actually part of a plan to make money tomorrow. And I see these beta channels as part of that. Now, if you actually compare the uh, old-style channels to the new ones, the, the main difference you'll find is on the old-style channels, there was only one video you could watch on the channel page. Everything else took you away from the channel page, where you go into this sort of video, um, almost random distribution of uh, videos that you can go to. And that's mostly how people navigated the system. That's what made it interesting, was this sort of random walk through um, viral media. If you now compare that to the, uh, the beta channels, what you'll find is it's now almost impossible to leave the channel page. That virtually everything plays on the channel page. And you'll also notice that virtually all the, rate, well, the ratings have gone. Right? Now you compare that to a commercial video distribution network. This one's Comedy Central. What you've got is you've got your video in the middle. You've got a load of links down the side to 
um, videos produced by the same content provider. And you'll also notice that this is similar as well, that if you want to post a comment on this, you actually have to click on a link, which is verbatim what you have on the YouTube beta channels. So the main reason that I see that YouTube has gone over from the old style channels to these beta channels is for the commercial content um, providers. If you like, the commercial content providers can produce a lot of traffic and produce a lot of money. So YouTube is obviously inclined to service this community more so than the, the bulk of what made up the body of YouTube previously. And obviously ratings in this sense don't really serve any benefit to uh, commercial content providers in that if they're actually putting out junk, they want people to watch it. They don't want people to actually see the, 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 the star rating and know that it's junk and not watch it from there. They want people to watch it irrespective of whether it's junk or not. So, this is the main reason that I think that YouTube has gone over to the beta channels, is it's turned what was a system where you essentially navigated randomly through the bulk, uh, through media that was produced by the bulk of the people. YouTube, yeah? It was media produced by the people and randomly navigating through that. It's now morphed into what is essentially a commercial video distribution network designed for um, people watching uh, videos by a relatively small amount of people who produce commercial content. And in that sense, it's more a clone of the Comedy Central homepage. And in this sense, a great irony is um, fulfilled in that Initially, it was seen that uh, YouTube was the good guys fighting off Viacom, and now YouTube has essentially uh, turned their system into what Comedy Central is. So, now is any of that really a problem? YouTube is a corporation; it can do whatever it wants, right? Well, yes, it can. However, um, it does so at the cost of its corporate image and they put a lot of money into things like corporate image people like Google um, you know with their motto don't be evil you know just like Fox News is fair and balanced <laughs> slogan doesn't mean everything but it's very difficult to reconcile a motto like don't be evil and this sort of action this is I would see this as almost an abuse of monopoly in that you know, people say YouTube's losing lots of money at the moment. You know, they're losing money hand over fist. No, not really. This is part of a plan to make money tomorrow. In that YouTube can take the loss from Google's funds to improve the system, maintain the servers, etc. Meanwhile, if someone is actually starting up a corporation that is going to compete with YouTube and they want to produce the same service but make a profit today, they can't really effectively compete with someone like YouTube, who is doing the same thing but taking a loss. And what YouTube has essentially now done is built up a um, monopoly on the viral market. So it's now almost unthinkable that if a presidential candidate was going to start up a video channel, they would do it anywhere else other than YouTube. And this brings us all back to... Uh, influence without accountability. So, you know, the main reason I'm doing this is to let people like Google and YouTube know that there are vigilant eyes watching them who uh, recognize the virtues of free speech in our society and what you have to do to defend it. Um, and in this sense, I hope this video rapidly um, propagates beyond the control of uh, certainly YouTube in that previously they initially deleted a video like this uh, they have now, they reinstated that video but they've now sort of removed that portion of history from their search engines so in many senses having this propagate beyond YouTube's control is is important um, and secondly, 
this is like what we as users can do to generate influence in YouTube. It forces them to make it a fairer and more open forum um, in order to maintain their corporate image. The second thing is this will hopefully gain the attention of some politicians who will realize that um, having marshals like Google in charge of virtually the entire information on cyberspace is a dangerous precedent and that it, if, you're, if information that you put out doesn't appear in Google to a large degree it doesn't exist in cyberspace. So there is a huge amount of influence that Google can have on things. And you're left with the problem of who, who watches the watchman. There needs to be some accountability there.